evening, everybody. So we're going to start now. Could you please be upstanding for the procession? Good evening and welcome to you all for the white coat ceremony. Um, particularly warm welcome to our new RCSI students in medicine, in pharmacy, physiotherapy and physicians associates. And we also extend a warm welcome to your families and friends watching perhaps through live streaming over in the main RCSI buildings or the website. This white coat ceremony is recognition that you are embarking on an important professional healthcare career with responsibilities for patients. And this ceremony is your first formal introduction to professionalism. The ceremony espouses the four core values of RCSI, respect, collaboration, scholarship, and innovation. During the ceremony, you'll be asked to put on your white coats and to recite the declaration with the RCSI president, Mr. Ken Mealy, and you will then process down the aisles to be congratulated by members of faculty. If I can ask you all to sit down just for a moment, please. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the platform party. So in the centre is Mr. Kenneth Mealy, RCSI president. And on your left and in seating order, we have Mr. Frank Donegan, the head porter and mace bearer. Mr. Javid Machikin, president of the RCSI Undergraduate Students' Union. Ms. Claire Clerwin, representing the School of Medicine. Mr. Anthony Marr, representing the School of Pharmacy. Dr. Maria Morgan, the Junior Cycle Director in the School of Medicine. And Professor Kevin McGuigan, Director of Foundation Year. Then we have Professor Celine Marmion, who's the Deputy Dean for Student Engagement at RCSI. And Professor Tracy Robson, the Head of the School of Pharmacy and Biomolecular Sciences. Professor Paul O'Neill is in surgery. Uh, doing it rather than receiving it and so he's going to join us a bit later and Paul is the medical director of the Physicians Associate Programme as well as being the head of the department for um, otolaryngeal head and neck surgery, ENT. We then have Dr Orna Tai, the head of academic operations in the School of Pharmacy and Biomolecular Sciences and Professor Arnie Hill, the head of School of Medicine. Over on the other side we have Professor Hannah McGee, Dean of the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Professor Clive Lee, Professor of Anatomy. Professor Suzanne McDonough, Head of the School of Physiotherapy. Professor Seamus Sreenan, Director of the Graduate Entry Medicine Programme at RCSI. And Dr Pauline Joyce, the Academic Director of the Physician's Associate Programme. We have Dr Marion Brennan, the Deputy Director from the Graduate Entry Medicine Programme. And Professor Denny Woodmansey, Director of the Physician's Associate Programme. We have Ms Alex Duplantier, Director of the Clinical Education in the Physician's Associate Programme. And then we have Ms. Ashling Brett, the student representative from the Physicians Associate Programme. And finally, Mr. Michael Moran, the physiotherapy student representative here tonight. And as I said earlier, my name is Judith Gilroy. I'm the Associate Director for Academic Affairs. I'm now going to call on the Dean, Professor Hannah McGee, to address you, our new students. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judith. Uh, President of RCSI, President of our Students' Union and other members of the platform party. Good evening to everybody and especially to you, our new students of medicine, pharmacy, physiotherapy and physician associates. Welcome to your first event with many of the senior faculty you've just been introduced to here at RCSI, 
These are the faculty who will instruct and guide and support you throughout your studies. They are here to mark just how significant this induction ceremony is. This is the first formal introduction for you to professionalism in your studies. We will work with you from the outset to help you to understand the responsibilities you undertake and the privileges that you will benefit from as student healthcare professionals. Qualifying as a healthcare professional involves undertaking a lot of academic study combined with training as a clinical apprentice in multiple and complex healthcare settings. In that way, it is very different from the typical university student. This essential apprenticeship training um, is possible because many Irish patients and their families generously allow their healthcare to be delivered in teaching environments. And they will permit you as students to learn about healthcare delivery while they as patients are being treated for often serious, worrying and distressing conditions. And without this generosity of spirit uh, by hundreds of patients and families over the course of your training, uh, it, would not be it would not be possible to deliver high quality healthcare education. So this enormous privilege that you will uh, receive is one which successive generations of students before you have respected and preserved, uh, and you must equally uh, respect and preserve for the next generation of students. Among this generosity of spirit from the public, we count the generosity of those who donate their own bodies uh, and the families of those donors. Um, uh, for, for, for most, their amazing generosity enables you to meet your first patients this week as you start your training in the anatomy room, and you'll hear a little bit more about this later on. One way to signal this rite of passage to the beginning uh, of, of your health professional career here at RCSI is to use this metaphor this evening of the white coat. The white coat, as you know, symbolizes many things. It symbolizes the role of the health professional, be it doctor, pharmacist, physiotherapist, physician associate. It symbolizes the scientist. It's a symbol of the importance of scientific evidence uh, and of being a good interpreter and user of that evidence in all of the decisions you will make about the care of your patients. And of course, it also symbolizes the expert. Um, you will know that white coats are not, not uh, always worn in many healthcare settings now, and there are lots of ongoing debates about the challenges of white coats, including infection and communication barriers and so on. But nonetheless, we all understand it as an important metaphor of the role that you're undertaking. And so for you today, taking on uh, a program of study at RCSI, it's a recognition that you're embarking on an important health professional career with significant responsibilities. This white coat ceremony was originated in the 1990s, so in fact it's not a, a very uh, old tradition, but it was originated in the US by a doctor called Dr. Arnold P. Gold, uh, who died a number of years ago, but interestingly in his career he actually uh, served as an undergraduate student in, in the Rotonda Hospital in Dublin. And adapting the words of Dr. Gold from medical students to all healthcare professions, what he said about the white coat ceremony was, this ceremony is intended to impress upon you the primacy of the professional patient relationship, to encourage you to enter into a psychological contract in which you will accept the obligations inherent in the practice of your profession, to be excellent in science, to be compassionate, and to lead lives of honor. It is designed to clarify for students that it will be their responsibility to take care of patients and also to care for patients. So for professionals, the white coat has been associated with, rece with receiving a lot of respect uh, and admiration for the wearer. As students, you must also learn how to give respect, uh, to be respectful to the patients you will meet and the families, but also to classmates, to RCSI staff, and to all of those you meet during your training. Um, and I hope and we will work hard to make sure that that respect will be reciprocated from the staff here at RCSI. And we espouse four core values at RCSI, as Judith mentioned, made easy to remember by the letters RCSI. So respect is the first of those, or for respect, collaboration, scholarship, which you're all undertaking, and innovation. And these qualities are the ones that we expect all of you, with the guidance of staff, to develop in your undergraduate years. You will be called on to develop your own sense of professionalism in many ways over your courses. Attending classes, lectures and practicals, and especially attending clinical rotations where patients and the public are giving of their lives to enable you to train 
uh, through their active involvement. That's really important. Uh, and there will be times when the clinical priorities of patient care will mean that your education is disrupted in some way. For example, um, uh, Professor O'Neill will be late here this evening uh, in the interest of patient care. And we ask that you respect that in those situations, which may be frustrating for you as learners, that the primary focus in the clinical setting always has to be the patient. You will each encounter challenges, particular to yourselves, as you learn about the variety of human conditions, diseases, disabilities, mental health challenges, and indeed personal and family challenges such as poverty, interpersonal violence, infertility, addiction, so many topics. As well, of course, as many joyous things that you will share with patients. Um, good health results, childbirth, many opportunities that you will have the privilege in a very personal way to, to bring good news uh, to the patients that you look after. And these are the rare privileges that health professionals get to witness and to share with other human beings. Some of the things that will be a particular challenge to you personally will differ from student to student. Perhaps a, a, an episode is particularly upsetting because a person reminds you of a recent bereavement in your family. Maybe the, the patient reminds you of somebody you know well. Uh, maybe, indeed, they, they represent some of your own health concerns. Uh, but you, like us as faculty members, we all share that commonality of upsetting experiences uh, and the need for some extra support or kindness at tough individual times. Your good days may be somebody else's tough days. And so, you know, the label handle with care, uh, we ask you to handle each other with care and ask for and give compassion and support to others when you see people who are maybe not having such a, such a good day themselves. Your careers are, are not ones to be faced either as perfectionists or alone. Healthcare is a team sport, and advice from others is always invaluable for our own well-being as well as the well-being of our patients. So we would encourage you to learn to play as a team early on in your studies. Now, if all this sounds very serious, and of course it is seriously important, it's not all about being somber and serious today. You'll be well trained and looked after by the faculty here. They mightn't be smiling now, but, but most of the time they're smiling, um, and by patients. And we will prepare you well for the responsibilities and role you face. And you, in turn, will enjoy fantastic opportunities and fantastic careers that you can't really imagine uh, here today. Uh, in careers that are inspiring and fun and challenging and rewarding in equal measure, and careers in many countries and in many different settings. So you're each starting a fantastic personal journey. Many of us here are envious of where you are today, starting off your professional careers. And we want to inspire and guide you to undertake that in a truly professional and enjoyable way. So as part of your professional and, and personal growth here in RCSI, we're also committed to nurturing and implementing a culture of engagement with students um, and a, a culture of partnership. So you will have, had, have the opportunity to work closely with staff around important decision-making about um, the department or the school or the institution. Uh, for example, we want your advice about how you find your courses, about curriculum reform, around the opportunities you have for electives or research, and so on. There is so much evidence to suggest that meaningful partnerships between students and staff enable students to further develop their collaborative and leadership skills. After all, in four, five, or six years, you will be our colleagues. Uh, so we want to start to work with you in that kind of collaboration. These partnerships will facilitate your own development as healthcare professionals and the capacity for you to truly influence and transform healthcare in your future careers. So today, we are formally launching uh, the RCSI Student and Engagement Partnership Agreement, led by our Deputy Dean, uh, 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 Professor Celine Marmion. And you will find this agreement, uh, a copy of it available on your seat today, and it will outline to you our commitment over the, over the coming years for opportunities to engage with staff uh, and a description of the sort of plans we've, we've already done in 2018-19 and the plans we have for the coming year. So we encourage you uh, to get involved with your students' union, your president is here this evening, and with your class representatives, and be an active participant uh, in how the college shapes itself as it goes forward. As an inspiration to incoming students every year, we invite the Students' Union president and three students representing uh, some of our undergraduate disciplines to deliver a short presentation describing some of their extracurricular experiences at college, which are contributing to their own personal and professional development. And we hope some of these presentations uh, will stimulate you to think about how you might best progress your own personal and uh, professional development. And following these talks, the ceremony will conclude with an invitation to you 
uh, to make your commitment um, to professional training by putting on your white coat uh, and by uh, reciting a declaration with our president. So this is the start of your career. Uh, think about where you want this career to take you and where this professional training might take you. And maybe this week, before you become settled in as students, you might write a diary entry um, about how you feel as you start your degree programme. It will be a nice note to look back on uh, coming up to your graduation date, which will come around, uh, I can guarantee you, much faster than you expect. So I wish you a great week starting your professional career, and I want to hand you over now to Dr. Orna Tai to talk a little bit about the student experience and to introduce our student speakers to you. So Dr. Tai. Hello everybody, and you're very, very welcome. This ceremony is intended to press on you the importance of the professional behaviours expected of healthcare students and to encourage you, our new students of RCSI, to take on challenges, to grow and to be excellent in all your endeavours. We recognise this excellence today by inviting high achieving students to share their personal experiences. So I'd like to call first on Mr Michael Moran, who's representing the School of Physiotherapy. So, members of the Platform Party, distinguished guests, staff and students, it is a great honour to be here with you today. I would like to begin by congratulating all of you physiotherapy, pharmacy and medical students for earning a place to study in the Royal College of Surgeons, Ireland. It is a real privilege to be part of your initial journey here in RCSI. My name is Michael and I am in my final year of the four-year physiotherapy programme. I decided to come to RCSI in April 2016. It has been one of the best decisions I have made so far in my life. That September, I sat where you sit right now as a nervous, excited, and slightly skeptical mature student. Nervous for many obvious reasons, but mainly because I was putting myself back into a classroom environment, an environment I had not enjoyed during secondary school so many years before. Excited because the journey that I had dreamt about had finally started, and with an institution that I, like all Irish people, held in extremely high regard. And sceptical because, well, that's what happens with advancing years. It can become one's default mode towards anything new or towards anything that may challenge. I was sceptical of my right to belong here, of my suitability for third level education, and the compatibility of this prestigious college with me. From day one, the people the environment and the atmosphere here at RCSI obliterated my scepticism and gave me a real sense of belonging. It has just been nerves and excitement ever since. I'd like to tell you about a moment during my first year of study from which I encountered a very valuable lesson. It did not come from a book, did not have anything to do with a clinical situation, nor had it anything to do with any past exam paper. The lesson presented itself during a tutorial when I asked a question about something that was confusing to me. I had investigated the topic myself, but still I was confused. I reasoned to myself that the, the answer must be simple and that I just couldn't see it. I explained the question to the lecturer and his response was, unfortunately, I can't answer that question for you right now because I don't know. Now this man is an excellent lecturer and scientist a teacher in the truest sense of the word, who has devoted his working life to scientific investigation and the teaching of science subjects, and he was saying to me, I don't know. The gentleman has probably forgotten more information in his career than what most of us actually know, yet he had the courage, the humility, and the integrity to say to, to, to a foundation year fledgling like myself that he didn't know. He showed what a genuine commitment to science is really about. What's, what is truly important. I remember smiling because I realized how proud I felt to be a part of RCSI, to be, to be part of something where honesty and integrity really matter, where, where if you are honest, then you will do just fine. We are often reminded that a journey can sometimes be more rewarding than the destination. Evidence shows that our years here in RCSI may define us as clinicians. I believe the most fruitful experiences can be had when we get together to chat, to work, and to enjoy ourselves. Staff and students, clubs and societies, 
culture groups, study groups, gym groups, and drinking groups. Find your niche. The greatest lessons may come in the unlikeliest of places. On that note, I encourage all of us to be open and ready to grab that opportunity to learn something new, or to build a new friendship, or to begin a new challenge. Be the first one to say hello. Make it a priority to find your RCSI family, especially if you're far away from your own. Your RCSI brothers and sisters will get you through the tough times. I wish you all the very best and look forward to meeting you. Thank you. I now have the pleasure of calling on this uh, representative of the School of Medicine, Ms. Claire Keohan. President of the Royal College of Surgeons, distinguished guests and fellow students. Four years ago, I was sitting in your seat attending the 2015 White Coat Ceremony. Each one of you has had a unique journey as to how you've come to be here today, but each of your journeys shares a common thread of determination, work, work ethic and motivation to succeed. Tonight, I would like to share with you my experience at RCSI over the past four years. Like all of you, I wanted to pursue my dream of studying medicine, but I also have another passion, playing rugby. When I was 19, I received my first international cap and I have been fortunate enough to continue to represent Ireland since then. I have played rugby in 19 countries on five different continents and I have also had the privilege of captaining my country while representing Ireland around the world. Over the past four years, I've had the opportunity to combine performing as a high performance athlete while studying at RCSI. When I first received my place here, I was encouraged by many very well-meaning people to perhaps take a year out. The words, you'll never manage it, and maybe you'd be better off deferring, were directed at me on a daily basis. In August 2015, I met with RCSI and gave a presentation of what my year combining both schedules of rugby and study would look like. I was nervous that the college would deem it impossible, but my concerns were grossly misplaced. For RCSI, the answer was simple. We will do everything we possibly can to help you balance both. And suddenly, just like that, much to my relief, there I was studying medicine in RCSI. Fast forward four years to today, and I can honestly say that these words have been honored. So many members of faculty and support staff have given up their time and gone above and beyond what would be expected of any academic institution to support me. What you will come to realize during your time here is that RCSI is not problem focused, it is solution focused. With early communication, organization, and some planning ahead, there has always been a way to make things work. I am a working example that you are now part of a college that will enable you to achieve your goals, your ambitions, and your dreams. No matter how big or small a problem may seem, there is always someone here to help you solve it together. The phrase holistic approach is frequently used when it comes to educating healthcare professionals. I firmly believe that RCSI live by this approach and embody what it is to look beyond the academic demands of their students and ensure a balanced approach to healthcare education. This is reflected in the emphasis put on getting involved in a wide variety of clubs and societies in our college. During my time in RCSI, I have learned that healthcare and high performance sport is actually a very similar environment. A group of highly trained individuals with thousands of hours of practice, working together as a collaborative, all striving towards the one common objective. In a team sport, you must value every member of your team. Every member has something to contribute. Everyone has a point of difference. You rely on each other's strengths so heavily that you could not function without one another. This could not correlate more with the team dynamic of healthcare. Without each other in this room, we could not provide a quality service to our patients. Value every member of your team, know their strengths and weaknesses, and challenge each other. This is how we grow together. In sport, as in medicine, there are many highs and lows. I have had my fair share of both. I have not always been selected to play, and injury does not always respect time frames. I have missed out on a World Cup by a matter of hours sustaining a knee injury in one of the final training sessions before the first game kicked off. I was having surgery at home as my teammates took to the field. As a team, we have also endured many disappointments, 
most recently failing to qualify for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. Each time I have had to pick myself up, I have received unwavering support from RCSI, acknowledging my commitment to play for my country and pledging their continued support. You too will experience highs and lows during your time here in RCSI. Be ensured that you are surrounded by a community of people who are here to help you. You are not merely a student number here. You will be treated as an individual with skills, knowledge and potential. Embrace that we do not know it all or have all the skills right away, but you have the potential and RCSI will allow you to thrive. Many people may look at my college experience and question why I pursue medicine and rugby at the same time. The reality is my year typically consists of 6 a.m. gym sessions, running sessions, many hours spent studying in airports, early nights and limited time for family and friends. But I think I am in a very privileged position to be afforded the opportunity to do what I love. Similarly in medicine, we find ourselves in a very privileged position. You will be allowed to witness and often to take part in people's care where they are at their most vulnerable responsibility and privilege of which cannot be understated. To conclude, I would like to share three thoughts with you. When I was in my intermediate cycle, a tutor passed a comment as we were leaving a tutorial room, which has stuck with me ever since. She said, do not become overwhelmed. Medicine is as simple as this. Each day you must challenge yourself to be a little bit better than the day before. I think that this is a mantra that if you live by, it will serve you very well in RCSI. Secondly, value every member of your team. And right now, your teammates are your classmates. You cannot do it alone. More than 60 countries are represented in our student body. You will make friends from many different backgrounds, all with something different to offer. We at RCSI are a team. Learn from your teammates, value one another, challenge one another, and grow together. And finally, try something new. Remember, it is easy to practice what you are good at. Do not fall into this trap. The challenge lies in the areas outside your comfort zone. Yes, it is nice to know what you are good at, but you must delve outside your comfort zone. Get uncomfortable, because this is how you will learn. I urge you to embrace all that RCSI has to offer. My experience over the last four years has been unique to me. Each one of you will develop your own story. I have been challenged in so many ways, and so too will you. Embrace these challenges. On behalf of the final year students, I would like to welcome you to Surgeons, and I'm honoured to have had the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Thank you. And now I invite another student to tell their story. I invite um, Anthony Marr, uh, who's representing the School of Pharmacy and Biomolecular Sciences. Distinguished guests, faculty and students, my name is Anthony, I am a third year pharmacy student. I remember when I was lucky enough to be part of the first group of first years that had their white coat ceremony in the then new Desmond Theatre. Back then, I'm afraid to say I didn't really know what the white coat ceremony was until I was in it, and subsequently appeared in my tracksuit and felt slightly unprepared as I saw other fellow students decked out in their finest clothes. Despite that, I am privileged to be given the opportunity to speak with you here today. Like a large number of students here, I came into RCSI through the Irish Pine system, having completed my secondary school exams to Leaving Cert in the CBS Nina in my home place to Mivara in Tipperary. If I had applied through the Pine system this year, I doubt I would have received enough points for this course, so congratulations to everyone for getting here. It's a fantastic achievement. Nobody can deny that this pharmacy course is arduous and demanding. That being said, being surrounded by these competitive minds will challenge and drive you to succeed and do better, just the same as they have done for me. To me, the transition from secondary school to college life was at first difficult, but then became a little easier. I could compare RCSI to my home in that we are a small, tight-knit community, pharmacy being even smaller, as you'll find out with the result that you generally can't do a whole lot here without everybody finding out. The amicable atmosphere translates from staff to students as well. What I have found most striking since coming here is how involved and approachable the lectures are, whether it's during teaching hours or outside of college time.
They are always at hand with whatever questions you may have or difficulties you may face and are keen to make our student lives better. I have been privileged to have received so many opportunities here in RCSI. The focus here is not just to inspire academic minds, but also provide students with an array of extracurricular activities to get involved with. For example, I am a current member with the Tag Rugby Society, and also I am the current president of the Pharmacy Society. As president of the Pharmacy Society, this position allows me to represent the pharmacy students within the college and provide the students with some much needed downtime with social and educational events, whilst also offering a platform from stu for students from across all years and disciplines to get to know each other better. During the month of June this year, with the help from the pharmacy department, I was able to complete a hospital placement with Tallaght University Hospital, a very exciting and rare thing or opportunity. I found that I was able to collaborate very effectively with my colleagues in the multidisciplinary team, a strength I would assume to be a direct result of being surrounded by student physiotherapists and doctors alike every day. This was a very beneficial experience to me, as it's all well and good learning about chemical structures and modes of actions of drugs, but to see firsthand the clinical application of what we were learning was an invaluable experience and allowed me to see that sometimes it really is worth putting in the hard work early on to see that finished product. For eight weeks as well this summer, I also had the opportunity to try my hand at developing my research skills by taking part in the research summer school in the college. I was immersed in design projects conducting scoping reviews. Through systematic design-based methodologies, I was able to improve ADHD services in Ireland. I also worked alongside Professor Fergal O'Brien and Dr. Michelle Flood in the IRFU Charitable Trust RCSI and AMBER research project. This is, this is not to say that I love the project, uh, every minute of the project, or wasn't challenged by it. Keeping your concentration whilst reviewing thousands of publications and ethics approvals can be a trial at the best of times. However, the lessons which I learned and the experiences which I gained has opened several new doors for me in this area. August and Shin, Mar Fuckle Score, Buntana Vos and Town Gar of Ega Gwivan Shaw. Togwim Sha E at Loigna Kuigno Shamelina. And as a parting word, enjoy the short time here. Take it from me, the years will fly. August on Marandur and Shanakal Kilver, Tusma Latna Hybra. And as the old saying goes, a good start is half the work. Thank you. I now have the pleasure of calling on Miss Ashling Brett, who's part of the Physician Associate Programme. <laughs> Members of the platform, esteemed guests, students and parents, I am honoured to be standing before you as a Physician Associate Student Representative. My name is Ashling, and I'm a second year physician associate student. I would like to begin by congratulating you all on reaching this point of your educational journey. This is a new experience for me, as I've never addressed an audience this big, so please go easy on me. I know everyone's journey through RCSI is going to be unique, but I wanted to share my journey with you. After my leaving cert, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I wanted to further my education, but I'm a very indecisive person. Everyone was telling me that science was the way to go, so I put biological and chemical sciences on my CAO. I graduated from UCC with a degree in physiology, and to be honest, I had no idea what the word physiology even meant in first year, but thankfully, I found a subject that made sense to me. Throughout my college years, I was waitressing in a hotel at weekends. These weekends turned into a year when I graduated from college and didn't know what to do with my physiology degree. My family saw that I was lost and encouraged me to apply for a job in a pharmaceutical company. So for the next year, I became an analytical chemist, testing various oncology drugs to ensure they met industry standards. I was carrying out experiments every day, which really suited my pedantic personality. However, I soon realized that even though I loved the work, I could not see myself in this job for the rest of my life. In the background, my twin sister had accepted a place on the PA master's program. I would listen to her tales of placement. She described her encounters with medical teams and patients, and I became very interested in the course. I pondered on the idea of me working as a healthcare professional and realized that this is what I wanted to do all along. 
I loved working in hospitality, so why not expand my medical knowledge and help people with their medical needs too? I have to admit, my twin and I went to our guidance counsellor in school and separately picked the same subjects for our Leaving Cert. We then did the same degree in college and now the same master's degree, so it seems like I'm copying her. <laughs> but look, we can laugh about being the first PA twins in Ireland. So I applied for the course and I haven't looked back since. This was a big step for me, as normally I do everything academic with my twin. I will never forget how nervous I was walking into the classroom on that first day. All along, my twin was the one who would make the friends, and I would just tag along and presume they were my friends too. She was my safety net. Tonight's ceremony welcomes this year's medicine, pharmacy, physiotherapy, and physician associate students. However, the PAs began their journey back in January. The PA course runs a little differently in that we embark a two-year full-time programme where we are medically trained to take patient histories, diagnose illness, perform physical exams, order tests and interpret results, develop and deliver appropriate treatment and management plans while also assisting in surgery. The two years are split between lectures and clinical rotations where we are exposed to a variety of clinical scenarios. So since starting my journey, I have grown as a person and become so much more confident in myself. I can make friends and talk to patients on my own without my safety net. I'm competent with new skills and grateful for the wonderful facilities and opportunities here at RCSI. I cannot predict how everyone's journey will go, but you will have your ups and downs. All I can say to you is embrace the journey. Enjoy every minute of it. You are not alone on this journey, so share your notes, help each other out with study, and don't be afraid to say you have no idea what the consultant is talking about. Be kind and considerate people and it will all be worth it in the end. I wanted to leave you with some motivation and inspiration, so I came across these two quotes. So the first one, if you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. And finally, always give 100% unless you're giving blood. <laughs> now call for our final speech from the students today and this is our student union presidy, president, sorry, Javid Mackian. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the platform party, but most especially to you, the newest generation of RCSI. I remember the day our SU team got elected, that same night I started working on a speech for this ceremony. And the reason was that to this very day, I remember being in your seat. Yes, yours. I was confused. I had no idea what to expect. But still, I remember the words of my SU president and how it set the tone for the rest of my RCSI life. With that being said, I wrote about five different speeches, and I kid you not, I tore them all up. I decided that I'm not going to introduce myself as Javid, the SU president. Instead, hi, my name is Javid the RCSI student who took every single opportunity that even remotely came into my sights. When I first came into the college, I was afraid and nervous of almost everything. I was so nervous that when I bought my first white coat, I got one that was too, one size too big, and I was too scared to return it. <laughs> Slowly but surely, though, I grew into it. And that's not a metaphor. I actually put on some weight. <laughs> one by one, the opportunities came. In my first year, I was asked to dance for International Night. Now, you don't know it yet, but that's one of the biggest nights of the year. I was asked to dance for the Middle Eastern Society, a culture that I knew absolutely nothing about. I thought it was madness to dance in front of 400 people. But I made myself a promise after my white coat ceremony five years ago. I promised myself that I would try everything positive, no matter what it was. I danced that year, and we actually went on to win International Night. Now, I'm pretty sure that my dance moves were not the reason why, but nevertheless, we won. And more importantly, I learned about a people who were very culturally different than I was. I made friends that to this day still stand by me when I need them most. So to you, I say this. Dance like no one is watching you. Represent where you came from and be proud of who you are. Share your culture, but immerse yourself in others. You'll learn a lot about other people, but even more about yourself. Even if something is out of your comfort zone, work hard at it. Try your best and also trust in your teachers. They genuinely want to help you. I went from teachers saying they expected me to fail my exams in high school, 
to world-renowned surgeons carefully teaching me how to dissect a heart, even though I didn't know how many cusps the mitral valve has. And just a heads up, if your anatomy teacher asks you, it's two, not three. <laughs> now, the point of the story is this. Use the staff here. Because even though they might seem tough on you, they genuinely want what's best for you. Because after all, you will be the ones taking care of their patients in the very near future. Even more importantly though, I think you should trust in each other. I want everybody to take a second right now and look at the person next to you. Now shake their hand. <laughs> very good. <laughs> now that person, that person can be your lifelong best friend. Or they can even be the mother or father of your child in the very far, far, far future. Now, these are your colleagues. <laughs> these are your colleagues for the next five or six years. Be nice to each other. Don't be shy, but most importantly, if you see one of your own struggling, even if you don't know them, help them. For it is what you teach the stranger of today that will save the patient of tomorrow. Now very quickly, I don't want to talk too much on academics because you'll get more than you can handle from your respective lecturers, but for those of you who may be worried, don't be. The mere fact that you're in this room is a testament to your capabilities. Continue to work hard, but also get involved with all of the different things that RCSI has to offer you. And with that being said, please allow me to tell you about one of the most, the, the most significant RCSI experience that has changed my life. In my third year, RCSI gave me the opportunity to fly to Vietnam to volunteer in an orphanage slash health center for disabled children. This was by far the most terrifying and exciting things that I've ever done to volunteer in a country that speaks almost no English for two entire months, to experience things that some people can only dream of, and to see life through the eyes of a disabled, orphan Vietnamese child. That trip completely changed my life. I was no longer afraid to try new things. And if you can take only one thing from my speech, then please let it be this. If it terrifies you, then do it. For bravery is not the absence of fear. It is the act of doing in spite of that fear. To all of you, some of the most ambitious and curious minds that I have ever met. Your future starts today. Every chance that you take now can change your life forever. That white coat that you're going to be wearing makes you part of something bigger than yourself. You're following in the footsteps of great men and women who have not just influenced medicine, but entire nations. Wear it with pride because RCSI does not train healthcare workers. We raise healthcare leaders. And from this day forward, you are a leader, not just in healthcare, but in humanity. Take every single chance that RCSI offers you so that it can shape you into the best version of yourself and so that you, in turn, can go on to shape the world. I wish you the best and I cannot wait to hear about the amazing things that you are all going to accomplish. Welcome to RCSI. Welcome to the best years of your life. I think on behalf of the faculty, I, I'll say again, and I get the pleasure of saying this quite a lot, we just ask the students, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? And we have no idea what they're going to say. Uh, I'm the only one in the whole of the college gets a preview sometimes just to check things work for people, but we have no idea. And I think it's a true reflection that they're able to share these stories and this is your future as well. Someone in this room is going to be standing up here in a few years' time telling their same experience. So have a great time at RCSI. So I'd now like to introduce you to Professor Clive Lee, the Professor of Anatomy, who will explain the importance of this ceremony, the white coat and professional behaviour in the anatomy room setting. Thank you very much. I'd like to join with my colleagues in welcoming you all to the Royal College of Surgeons and to the beginning of your professional training in medicine, pharmacy, physiotherapy, and physician associate studies. This white coat ceremony is a rite of passage, a visible sign of your entry into a professional course. All four professions involve dealing with patients and you'll meet your first patients in the anatomy department. But where do they come from? If you look at anatomy lesson paintings, such as those by Rembrandt, the cadaver was always a convicted criminal who'd been executed that day. But the demand for cadavers exceeded the supply, so grave robbing and murder were resorted to. 
This all changed in 1832 with the passing of the Anatomy Act, specifically to ensure a legal supply of cadavers with which to educate doctors. Initially, the source was those whose bodies were unclaimed by their relatives. But in the 1960s in Dublin, this changed when the Irish anatomists initiated a campaign to encourage members of the public to donate their remains after death for medical teaching and research. And it is these people whom you'll meet in the anatomy room, Irish men and women who've generously donated their remains so that you can learn anatomy. The people who donate their bodies to us want you to learn from them. It's their gift to you. They are both your teachers and your patients. You can repay their generosity by doing your best, by studying hard, and by treating their remains with discretion and respect. Your clinical problems should not be discussed in public on the bus home, and nor should theirs. For the same reasons, you must not take photographs in the anatomy room. So our donors will also help teach you how to behave as a professional. When you don your new white coat and come into the anatomy room, you'll also meet some of the senior members of the health professions. People like Mr. Brian Lane, a graduate and fellow of the college. These are people to look up to, to emulate their knowledge, professionalism and kindness. They'll teach by example and you'll learn, I suspect, sometimes by osmosis and sometimes by a little bit of magic. I hope that you enjoy your anatomy course with us, resplendent in your white coats. They are health and safety devices to protect you while you dissect, so please keep them clean and out of the canteen. They're an important professional symbol, so you've got high standards to maintain. I congratulate you on reaching this landmark in your careers and your patients, or your, <laughs> your parents, for helping you to do so. I look forward to working with you and wish you every success and good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lee, and thank you to all of our speakers this evening. Um, so we're coming towards the end, and we want to ask, as each of you embark on your journey as students in RCSI, we're going to ask you to think about how you will strive to learn the principles of professionalism and to reflect on and master the challenges of being professional uh, in your training. We ask you to commit to act uh, from today uh, in a professional manner and to begin to practice, to live up to the ideals that you will want to practice in future as a qualified healthcare practitioner. Um, and we're going to ask the President shortly uh, to lead you in a declaration, um, uh, a, a declaration uh, the next time of which you will uh, repeat it will be at your graduation ceremony. Um, in some of our, uh, we have a, ver a very diverse student group here, and in some of our uh, centres across the world, uh, when we do this, students in different ways make this, de this, this, this student declaration. Um, and people do it in different ways. Uh, some, some students in some schools have learned about pledges. So sometimes students like to hold up their hand. Sometimes students like to put their hand on their heart uh, or whatever. So in whatever way you'd like to think about you making this promise to yourself, to your patients, uh, to RCSI and, and to the wider society about how you will approach this training uh, as a healthcare professional. Whichever way you feel comfortable to do that, please feel welcome to do that. We have a, a wide variety in which we do that. So I'm going to ask you in a moment to stand to put on your white coats and then to, to remain standing and to settle down and then I will introduce you to the President uh, who will lead you in the reading of the declaration. So maybe you'd like to stand now uh, and each of you to put on your white coats. Or maybe even have your student beside you to put on their coat, whichever. Okay, I, th I think I think we have I think we have a sea of white. Um, I think that signals we are ready to go. So I'm going to uh, invite our president, Mr. Kenneth Mealy, president of RCSI, uh, to, to to ask you to make the student declaration this.
first public lecturation of your ambition to be um, a healthcare professional um, over the course of your studies, a student healthcare professional. Thank you, Thank you Dean. So it's my pleasure to add my voice of welcome for you here tonight to the start of your student days here in RCSI. As the Dean has already alluded to, uh, already we want you to think about your professional career and the day you graduate. Now a key part of the graduation ceremony is the graduate's declaration. And this is based on the Greek Hippocratic Oath, which was used for the qualification of doctors in ancient times. Our graduate's declaration is a modern day statement based on uh, uh, input by RCSI students, which states their commitment to the ideals of professionalism in their career. And they uh, state this on their day of graduation, as the Dean has alluded to, in front of their families, their teachers, and their class friends and peers. It's a declaration made by all RCSI graduates, all those uh, uh, taking part in healthcare professional education, like you here today, medicine, pharmacy, physiotherapy, and physician associate studies. And a similar declaration is also made by our postgraduate research degree awardees, those receiving masters, MDs, and PhDs. So in front of you, you have a copy of the White Coat uh, RCSI declaration. It is a powerful declaration and we want you to read it loudly and proudly and to make those watching even more proud of you as you take the next step uh, into becoming a healthcare professional. So I'd ask you to repeat after me. Uh, today I will begin to practice my profession in whatever profession is relevant to you uh, with, uh, with, uh, with conscience and dignity. As I learn, the health of my patient will be my first concern. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will remember that there is an art to my profession as well as science, and that warmth, empathy, and understanding sk uh, are skills I will strive to develop. I will respect the confidential information that is entrusted to me even after a patient has died. I will respect the confidential information that is entrusted to me even after a patient has died. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, a political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient nor to influence the appropriate completion of my studies as a health professional student. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to I will not use my professional knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I will not use my professional knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I will study and respect the hard-won scientific gains of those in whose steps I walk, and gladly share such knowledge with those that follow, when and where I am appropriately qualified to do so. I will abide by the code of conduct of my profession and during my studies in RCSI, I will strive to develop high standards of practice, lifelong education and research in the interest of human health. I make these promises solemnly, freely and upon my honour. 
So I congratulate all of you. Thank you, President. So we're now going to try and do, um, you're all going to come up and shake hands with members of the platform party. So we're going to start with the front rows. You all remember how we're going to make this like a lovely chemical reaction flowing round, down, up to the sides, yeah? Let's go. From, from the front rows, if the platform party could take their places, please. The second rows, if you start. This, yeah.
done everybody, we're nearly there, we're nearly finished. Thank you for your resounding uh, declaration, it really was loud and impressive um, and I hope you've got a real sense tonight of how welcome we want to make you all feel here at the start of this next phase of your professional journey. So enjoy the rest of this week. Um, Michael talked about finding your niche. You'll only find your niche if you get out there and try lots of different things. So, you know, take the words of you of Javid. Here is the SV president, but as somebody who's just tried everything, um, and that's a really good message for this week and the next couple of weeks. Get out there, meet new people, immerse yourself, I think was the other lovely phrase that he used. So have a great um, settling into RCSI, join the societies, get out there and make new friends, and immerse yourself in everything that we have to offer you. That concludes the white coat ceremony. Thank you for your engagement this evening. It's been really impressive. And please, can you be upstanding for the outward procession? Well done, everybody.